In this question, we are given a log graph and question one says draw the log graph. Okay, now what I've noticed in the past is students don't really like to draw log graphs and I, I don't blame you. They are weird. We're not very familiar with them. So what we do is we, we do a little trick. We first modify this or we change it into its inverse, which is a exponential. So to do that, we step one is always to switch your X and Y. So currently this looks like this, because remember F of X just stands for Y. So what we do is we switch X and Y around. Then we have to remember how log works. Usually we write it with the log on the left. So I'm actually gonna do that. Now remember in previous videos, we said that log goes like this. It starts with this number to the power of this number should equal the stuff inside the bracket, which is y minus 1. Then when we do inverses, the next step is to get y alone. And so what we're going to end up with is y equals to 2 to the power of x plus 1. Now this we do know how to draw. This is an exponential graph that has moved up by one unit. Okay, so it's going to be up by one unit. And it's probably going to do something like that. Or it may just do something like that. However, it's not going to be underneath the asymptote. The only time it's underneath is if we have a minus in the front of the equation. So the reason I'm showing you this is notice that it never cuts the x-axis. So we don't have to waste time trying to calculate the x-intercept. If you did, you would get stuck and you wouldn't be able to go any further. So what we need to do is find the asymptote, which is the dotted line. So we're going to calculate that, find the asymptote. And then we're also going to find the y-intercept. And so I've written this as f minus 1, just to remind us that this is the inverse. It's not the log graph. So let's go draw that inverse so long. So the asymptote is always this line over here. So that's going to be at plus 1. Then we said that we should try find a y-intercept. So we do that by making x 0. So we have f of minus 1 of 0. Remember, we're busy with the inverse now. And so 2 to the power of 0. So that's a plus 1. That's going to be 2 to the power of 0 plus 1 is going to give us 2. And so the y-intercept is at 2. Now, how do we know if the graph is going to go like this or like this? Well, what we do is a little trick, and that, that's the following. We just choose an x value somewhere on the right. So I'm just going to choose 3. So if x is 3, then the y value is 9, which is all the way up here, which is somewhere up there at the top. So clearly, this is a graph that is going to do something like that. I'm not going to go into that point because the graph's going to look a bit weird. But what I would do in a test is you would just show the teacher that you found some other value and you could just call it 3 and 9. And so please remember that this is the inverse graph. But once you have your inverse graph or any graph, it's easy to find the opposite one by just switching the coordinates around. And so this coordinate, which is 0, 2, will simply switch to 2 and 0. This asymptote, which is y equals to 1, will simply become x equals to 1. And this point here, which is 3 and 9, will simply switch to 9 and 3. Then it becomes quite easy to draw the graph, and that's going to be the log graph. So we'll start with the coordinate of 2 and 0, then the dotted line of x equals to 1, and then the coordinate of 9 and 3. And then we can draw the graph. Now look how the exponential hugs the asymptote over here. Well, the log graph does the same. So it goes like this, comes down, and then it goes very close to the asymptote, like that. So quite a long process. All we actually wanted to do was draw the log graph, but we don't really like to work with logs. They're quite complex. So what we do is we get the inverse of this, which is an exponential, and that we do know how to draw. So we draw the exponential, which is the black graph. And then what we do is we just flip all of the coordinates around so that we can easily draw the inverse without having to actually look at the inverse equation at all. Number two says determine the domain and range of the inverse. Now you've got to be careful. This is the original. And so the inverse is the exponential graph. So they're actually just asking us for the inverse I mean the domain and range of the exponential graph. Well, you can see that the exponential graph goes all the way to the left and all the way to the right. So its domain, which is the x values, is any real number. The y values of the exponential, well, they go very, very high, so all the way to infinity. But the lowest y value will be the following. It will be the asymptote line of y equals to 1 because the, the exponential graph never goes below that line. So we could say that y is an element from 1 up to infinity. We're not going to include the 1 
Why? Because the graph never touches one. It never touches the asymptote, but it gets extremely close. And then lastly, number three, determine the y value of the inverse when x is zero. Remember, that's always the place of x inside there, but this whole thing over here is usually the y value. So it's the y value of the inverse when x is zero. So we go to the inverse, which is the exponential, and we look where the x value is zero, or well, that's over here, and what's the y value there? It's two, so that's the answer. Because they're saying here, determine the y value when x is zero for the inverse, that's because of that minus one over there, and so the y value there is two. So in summary, in this video, what we learned was to draw a log graph, you can, if you like, first switch it to the inverse, which is an exponential graph, then draw the exponential graph, which is fairly easy, and then flip the coordinates around so that we can see what the log graph looks like.